Hey there, my name is Portia Laurie. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I am back today with something that was actually requested. So um, I want to say sometime in the summer of last year, I released a video where I did like a top tier list of like my favorite pop groups of the 90s and early 2000s. And in that comment section, someone suggested that I revisit the early 2000s or better known as my emo era. And I thought, yeah, that sounds pretty fun. So let's do it. I don't really think that this video requires too much of a prelude, so we're gonna get right into it. But first, as always, if you enjoy my opinion on music, movies, TV shows, what have you, do me a solid and drop a like on this video, then run over to that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it, so you can be notified every time I upload. And if you cannot get enough of my opinion, I also co-host a podcast where we just talk about movies and it's a whole lot of fun. It's called the Cinema Sit Down Podcast. It'll be linked in the description below if you'd like to go check it out. We're available on iTunes, Spotify, and basically wherever you get your podcasts. In previous iterations of me doing tier lists, I have made tier lists myself and then, you know, done them for my channel. But in today's, I decided not to do that. Like, I know that this already exists. So we're just gonna use a pre-existing one. I will have it linked in the description um, if you're interested in doing it yourself. I have opted to pick a tier list that is um, all the bands or at least the majority of the bands that are going to be playing at this year's We Were Young Fest in 2024. I figure I really want to go to this festival, so I'm manifesting that I'm somehow gonna come across tickets that I can afford and I will be in attendance at this festival. We're just going to put that kind of energy into the universe. So that's where we're at. Okay, let's get into the categories. First category is must see. So this is th the top things that I want to see at when we were young. So I think also going into this, I might be maneuvering some of the bands and this isn't going to be necessarily my favorites, but who I'd most want to see. Next, we have really want to see. So this is like not necessarily a requirement, but if I can catch them, for sure. Category is uh, would like to see, would see if free. This category is not interested, so these are just bands that I've either A, seen and don't care about, or B, I just don't care about the band at all. And lastly is going to be who. So I think this is going to be a category filled with either bands I'm not interested in, bands I don't know, one very important note though before we go forward you know back in the day i might i might have rocked something like this and i'd love to regale you with a ton of photos of me being like a really embarrassing emo kid but like many people of my era i have lost all those photos on because i deleted my myspace and now they're just like gone forever i i don't know i had a lot of computers with lime white it's a whole thing so i don't have a whole lot of photos of me being an emo, but if I have any, I'll be sure to throw them in. Let's start with 303. So, funny story about 303. Um, I've mentioned it a few times in my videos, but back in the day, I worked at the roller skating rink where I skated at. And uh, during my like teen years and early 20s, we used to host these things called band nights. So we would have, there'd be a stage set up at the end of our like snack bar area. Um, there would be, like lights and the whole shebang and there'd be bands playing and you could skate while that was happening or you could like mosh in front of the bands whatever it was a thing now i bring this up because uh band nights started to become really popular the local band the local music scene in general in um the bay area california bay area is actually pretty big i would assume it's probably still pretty big today but i don't really know but we used to get relatively like decent named bigger bands and a lot of the bands that i saw while i was working there it end up going on to become like popular bands like really popular bands uh this first one that we're going to talk about falls into that category so the first band i'm going to talk about is 303. i would i would actually say they're kind of the end of emo and the beginning of when like edm music was really beginning to pop off because I would say that their music was definitely a mix of the two. Again, I'm no music expert, okay? I'm just I'm just talking out of my ass about what I think I know about music. I don't know anything about anything. 303, I definitely think, falls into the, like, 
EDM-esque or what we would later coin as scene music. Anyway, 303 was like a big deal to me and my friends. Um, I would say like comical music in general was definitely popular at this time too because by the time 303 came out, I want to say this is also when Lonely Island was super big on SNL, all those digital shorts, you know. And I think Weird Al had made his comeback. He did White Nerdy. That was like 2009. So yeah, I would say joke comedy music was sweeping the nation, if you will, and 303 definitely rode that wave. So even though I did mention that 303 played at the roller rink I, I worked at, I opted not to be there that night. I will never forget this. My friends told me this band is coming by. They're gonna be huge. You should stick around. You should watch it. And I, I don't know what I did, but I just like went to the mall. Who knows? Who knows where I was, but I wasn't at the 303 show. And it's one of my bigger regrets. With that all being said, I'm gonna throw 303 into really want to see because I was tangentially close to them, but not quite all the way there. Next. I swear every band is not gonna have all of this preamble and we're definitely gonna have to do a speed round at some point. So we're back. I had to move the bow. I, I don't know. It looked really crazy over here and like the ribbon just like sitting here was like driving me insane. So just like imagine I'm wearing the cutest like little black emo bow ever. Moving on. The next band that we're gonna talk about is All American Rejects. I remember this was, th this literally was the shift from me being like, no, let's see, uh, like a sixth grade, like Britney Spears fanatic to being like, I think I'm into rock and roll. I think I'm a little rocker chick. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely part of that transition of my life and where I was like, I'm really sad because I'm a teenager. Like that's the energy that I had. Not to dismiss their music, because their music is actually really good, well-written. Um, they're pretty decent musicians, I would say. I have seen them once before. I saw them at Warp Tour. So I wouldn't see that, I wouldn't put them on must-see just because I have seen them. And like, they put on a good show, but it was like, you know, yeah, I've seen it. Um, so I'm gonna go with really want to see. Next, we have Anne Berlin which I'm not super familiar with their music. I think the only Anne Berlin song I know is Feel Good Drag, which is like a really good song. Oh, that was believable. It's like a really good song. Um, I don't wanna sing for you guys because um, I want you guys to continue to watch the video, but I will uh, share some lyrics that I think are interesting. Was this over before, before it ever began? Your kiss, your calls, your crutch, like the devil's got your hands. This was over before it ever began. Your lips, your lies, your lust, like the devil's in your hand. Ooh, so good. So I'm gonna put them in not interested, only because like, yeah, I, I'm i not gonna pay to see anyone that I know one song of. Like that's, it could never be me. Next we have August Burns Red, which uh, to be fair, did not grow up on this. This is not part of my emo dumb, but my boyfriend is quite a fan. And so I've listened to a lot of their music as an adult and I actually would be highly interested to check them out live. So I'm gonna throw them in the would like to see, would see for free. Um, it's not necessarily going on my itinerary, but if I if I have to see them, I'm not, I'm not upset about it. Next up, we have Bayside, which again, I'm throwing this into uh, would like to see, would see for free, not super familiar with their discography. However, wouldn't be mad about seeing them live. Do remember them sounding pretty good. Next up, we have Cartel, which if memory serves correct, and I'm gonna double check, they had a song called Honest that I think I was super into. I'm gonna throw them into the not interested. Like uh, again, like it's a song, that's all I got for you. Cobra Starship. The chokehold that this band had on me from like 2007 to like 2012, whenever that song they did with Sia. Is it Sia? Obsessed with them. They also had the song for the Snakes on a Plane soundtrack, but for the main single for the song, it was a collaboration. But that lineup was so sick, and I, I really genuinely think that that song slapped so hard. 
And then my Gossip Girl fans will, might remember that Blade Meester did Good Girls Go Bad with Cobra Starship. And I adore that song. So Cobra Starship, I've never had the opportunity to see them live. So I'm putting them in my seat. I, um, I honestly would super love to check them out live. Next is Coheed and Cambria, which is a band I could never get into. Um, I think that they're lovely musicians, um, but that guy's voice really annoys me, I'm not gonna lie to you. So I'm gonna put them in not interested. Just 10 out of 10 uh, wouldn't choose to go to on my own. Next up we have Dashboard Confessional. I wanna say I, I've mentioned this numerous times on my channel, but I don't know that I have. So in case I haven't, um, Dashboard Confessional is my all time favorite band. Um, I've been in love with them literally since the first time I heard Hands Down when I was in seventh grade. So I was like 12, 12 to 13, right in there. That song blew my mind, uh, changed everything. I had heard like screaming infidelities probably because that song was a really big hit off of their the Swiss Army Romance album, but it really wasn't until um, A Mark, A Mission, and Brand of Scar that I had just like full blown. And I, I've seen Dashboard Confessional, I want to say eight or nine times. I have actually lost count. Also, one of the shows that I went to, I actually saw them as, tell me if anyone else remembers this band, but Further Seems Forever, which was another band fronted by Chris Caraba, who is the lead singer of Dashboard Confessional. And I just, I prefer him as Dashboard Confessional. But if you like Dashboard Confessional, I do suggest you go check out his other entities. He also had like a folk, a folk band called Twin Forks, I wanna say, Twin Folks, Twin Forks something like that. I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to be into it, but I wasn't, so uh, I couldn't tell you about that. But Dashboard Confessional, uh, greatest of all time, seen them so many times, still a must see. Um, if, I, if, if they're in a lineup, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll go see them by myself. I know I've already seen them before, but I have to. Devil Wears Prada is again, one of those bands that I'm like, I've heard of you, but like who listens to you? And I know that they have obviously a huge following. I'm just not part of it. I think you can tell by now that like Screamo was not my thing, like not my jam. I didn't listen to those bands, uh, generally speaking here. I think what I'm also learning is that um, I, was like a commercial emo kid, meaning that like, I liked the stuff that I heard on the radio and I would then go and buy set albums that I heard on the radio. But I don't think I was actively going out of my way to seek music. Next, we are on Fall Out Boy. I, uh, but Fall Out Boy, that was a huge, again, under the court, from under the court tree was a huge turning point in like my music dumb, I don't know, solidified that I was, I was an emo kid and not conforming as can be. I have never had the opportunity to see them live, unfortunately. So I will take any, um, any opportunity I could. So I'm putting this in must see for sure. I, I actually, I think they're one of the bands that like I've, I've kept up with. Like some of these bands that I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, they're still making music, that's cool. Um, but Fall Out Boy, I have consistently followed their career, and I think I find a song I like on just about every single one of their albums. I think, uh, how people take in music these days is like a lot of us don't actually listen to full albums. I don't think I'm alone in this. Um, I would say I've probably been not listening to full albums for a very long time, and I'm trying to get myself back into that. Like for example, I listened to all of Midnight's when that when Taylor Swift dropped that, that album, but I still haven't listened to Torture Poets. And half of the reason is because that album's like 16 songs long and like who has time for that? Tell me in the comments, like do you guys listen to full albums or do you listen to the singles and that's kind of it? And if you're more interested in the artist, then you'll go and find the rest of their catalog. Or are you consistently deciding whether or not you like an artist based on an entire album. Do you just base it on a single? Like, I'm curious how other people kind of figure out what artists they like. Olivia Rodrigo, I listened to all of Sour. I didn't listen to her new album because I just haven't had the time. Sabrina Carpenter I, is like one of my 
the new favorite artists, but like I only know the singles that are on the radio. I haven't listened to emails I can't send. Next, we have Hawthorne Heights, which this band is quite contentious in my mind because I remember, you know, you know when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, um, there's just some stuff like if everyone likes it, you there's just some things that you just have you just have this feeling that like I have to go against it. Like everyone likes this, I have to hate it. And that's how I felt about Hawthorne Heights in seventh grade uh, and throughout my teen dumb. I did not get into Hawthorne Heights at all. I thought they were overrated. I would tell everyone I thought Ohio, oh, Ohio? Am I okay? I told everyone I thought Ohio is for lovers was dumb. Um, my sister was a really big fan of Hawthorne Heights and I was just like, could care less. In retrospect, I was an idiot. Like Hawthorne Heights was actually really good. Um, their lyrics were good. I actually think their screaming was really great. Uh, yeah, 10 out of 10. If I could go back in time, I would have just uh, said, shut up and been a Hawthorne Heights fan. So they're also going pretty high on my list. I would love to see them live. Hey Monday. You know what my biggest memory of this band is? The lead singer from Hey Monday was in Degrassi Goes to Hollywood. And so when I think of Hey Monday, that's the scene I see in my head. I see her standing next to Craig giving Ellie the death stare. Um, aside from that, I know they had a song that I liked and that's all I got. I don't really care if I see them or not because I've seen them before. So I'm gonna put Hey Monday in um, Woodsy for free. Like I have nothing against them. I'm just not going out of my way to see them. Next we have the band I was talking about earlier. It's Jimmy Eat World. Um, so like I said, I've seen them unintentionally three times. They were at BFD, which was my very first concert in 2005. Uh, the headliner was Foo Fighters. They were one of the openers. Um, I also saw them open for Green Day on the American Idiot Tour in, I want to say it was like that same year, I want to say it's 2005. And then I saw Jimmy World for a third time and they opened for Dashboard Confessional. Uh, yeah, I think um, they opened for Dashboard Confessional who's opening for Third Eye Blind. So yeah, unintentionally seen Jimmy World three times. They kill it every single time. 10 out of 10 would see them again, but I have to put them in the would see them for free category because I just keep seeing them for free. So that seems fitting. Next up, we have Mayday Parade, which is another band that I actually saw at the rink I used to skate at. And I actually like, I like them so much and I had never heard of them before, just saw them live randomly that I actually ended up buying a hoodie. And I wish I still had this hoodie because this thing would probably be worth something now because this, the first, the first time I saw or heard of Mayday Parade, it was easily 2006 or seven. So it would have probably been right before they blew up because they were just playing at the rink I skated at. So I don't think that they were anybody big at the time. Have not kept up with their career in the slightest. I just remember them and having this uh, tangential memory of them. So I'm gonna put them in Woodsy for free. I'm not going out of my way because I'm not familiar with their music anymore, but like that memory is lodged in here. Next, we're getting to one of the pinnacles of emo, My Chemical Romance. Um, I think it goes without saying, like, are you a real emo kid if you aren't a fan or, or a hater? Like, you gotta be one or the other. You don't get to be in, there is no middle ground. Really adore that first album, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. That The way that that entire album looped on my fucking Sony Walkman, bitch. I love that album. So they're going in a top tier must see. I, I really, really, really want to see My Chemical Romance. If I could only see one man out of all of them, I think it would be a very close call between Dashboard Confessional and My Chemical Romance. <laughs> totally kidding. I would definitely see My Chemical Romance given the fact that I've seen Dashboard a lot. Next, the entire reason that I picked this tier list um, because I don't feel like I've had any opportunity to ever talk about this band, nor do I feel like I will probably have an opportunity again. So here we are. Friday night, it's time to party. Drop it down and get real naughty. 
Girls talk shit, we don't care. Take off our underwear. Um, bruh. Okay, so the, the millionaires played at the roller rink I worked at a lot. I don't know if they are native to the Bay Area from what I've like read online. I'm pretty sure they're like from Arizona or something like Vegas or something like that. Uh, the millionaires, again, were kind of into that end of emo, beginning of scene, beginning of EDM mixture, and they actually predate Kesha. Now, I won't go into the millionaires versus Kesha uh, debacle, but I will suggest that you go check out this deep dive. This is about Kesha, but in this video, they talk about the comparison to the millionaires. But you can make that deduction on your own. But anyway, I thought the, the doc was really interesting and I didn't know I didn't know at the time that there was this comparison going on, but I knew as just like a follower, a fan of both of them, that they were both extremely similar and had the same kind of vibes. But the millionaires were like funny, um, high sexually driven party music. Um, the song that I was just singing, if you didn't recognize it, is called Alcohol. And it's like, it, it was literally just a song about going out with your girls and having fun and getting blackout drunk. And like most of their music was different variations of that. I thought the millionaires were super fun. So I'm gonna put millionaires and uh, really wanna see. Just cause like the nostalgia factor alone is just the reason I'm so interested in seeing them again. That would be really wild. Next up we have Motion City Soundtrack, which again, this feels just, oh wow, this gets me in all the feels. I actually got into Motion City kind of later in the game, I believe, but I genuinely, I love the lead singer's voice. Uh, Tell me if you are right. That song is so good. Um, it hits, it hits even better now. Like as a kid, I didn't know, I didn't know how to label my emotions most of the time and I had zero clue what anxiety really was. So going back and listening to these jams, I'm like, oh man, like this stuff resonates way more now that I'm way more um, emotionally knowledgeable. 10 out of 10 would love to see them, have never seen Motion City soundtrack. I was at a concert where they were playing, but I didn't see their set. So I'm gonna go with a must see on that one for sure. Next we have Newfound Glory, which this is a band that I had to come around to um, as well, kind of like Hawthorne Heights. Like I thought they were a little overrated and so I kind of didn't like them just based on that. But now that I've had time to go back and really go through, scrub through their catalog, I think that they would be really fun to see live. So I'm gonna throw them into the really wanna see. They're not necessarily like a top priority for me, but I would like to see them live at least once. That'd be really cool. Next we have Say Anything. I'm not super familiar with Say Anything. I think I know quite a bit from the um, from their first album and then like, I don't really know what happened to them afterwards. Uh, I, I would be interested in seeing them live, but like there's no real big pull there. So I would just put them in the like, would see for free. Next we have Silverstein, which I'm not like super, super wildly familiar with, but I do enjoy them. Um, so I'm gonna throw them in the woodsy for free. All right, we're down to our final three. So I figured I'd stop here and talk about them just cause they were some, some influential bands. Uh, first we got We The Kings, whom I, again, saw for the first time at a concert. I saw them at Warp Tour. Um, but yeah, I saw them randomly. Um, they, we were at the front of the stage waiting for All American Rejects that were going on right after them. So we ended up just watching the We The King set and they blew me away. I thought that they were really good. Um, favorite song is definitely the one with uh, Demi Lovato. They, I think they played that one with the girl from Hey Monday. So We The Kings, I have seen them, um, but would see them again. So I'm gonna throw them in would see for free. The fact that I never got to see them as a kid is what makes me so passionate about wanting to see them now. But I really, really, really love to see Sim Simple Plan. Uh, Simple Plan was like such a staple of like my childhood. If I had a dime, 
for every time I said, welcome to my life, I would be a millionaire right now. That song is permanently ingrained in my brain. Um, it's going into my seat. I, I, 10 out of 10, would love to see Simple Plan live. And lastly, this is probably the band I would like to see live the most that I have not gotten the opportunity to as of yet, and that would be The Used. I have to, I have to go to this. But here is my grand finale tier list. Um, I, I am surprised by the amount of bands I was unfamiliar with. Um, and this could be unfamiliar with like their actual music. A lot of them, like I recognize the names and I might have seen them and or heard them in passing but i'm not familiar with them so i'm actually surprised that that category is so big so at some point i want to actually go through those um and listen to them and give them a shot especially if i uh manifest getting these when we were young tickets but i will link this tier list in my description below and if you end up doing it please be sure to let me know in the comments and i'll go check out your listings uh, I hope you had fun doing this little cheer list with me today. I think that's gonna do it for me. As always, if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. It helps me out so much. Uh, if you can't get enough of my dumb opinions, you can head over to the podcast. It'll be linked in the description, the Cinema Sit Down Podcast. Please be patient with me, but I have more new stuff on the way for you coming up. And until then, I will catch you guys later. Bye.